Welcome back to Snap Material. So in this episode, Evan and I are going to be talking our experience during the Spider-Verse season. We're also going to talk a little bit about the new game mode, Conquest, and we will get into our cards that we unlocked during the season. So here we go. So what did you run into last season? Or, uh, did you have any popular decks you like to play? Did you have any decks that you didn't want to go up against or that you encountered a lot? What was what was things like? Well, like I said, I, I butted heads and got really irritated with uh, with High Evolutionary a few mm-hmm. times because there, there were some games where I was just like, I, if I don't get Luke Cage, I got no shot here. Really frustrating because Luke Cage is in pretty much all my decks too. Um, so, <laughs> right. but yeah, I would go through stretches where I just wouldn't get him. I went on a real roll. Um, I think I, I think I told you last season I had a couple decks that worked really well, and then then they they stalled out. Oh, just basically uh, Silver Surfer and Wong. Oh, the one that I stole from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That one got me. I mean, I, I don't remember the exact numbers, but that one took me from the '60s to the '90s. Just in um, case listeners out there that want to know and copy off Evan like I did, please tell them I, tell them it, the deck. Okay. So Spider Ham, of course. I actually I forget it was probably Sunspot in there Sunspot. before. Yeah. Um, but but once Spider Ham got in there, the the joy of the pig was uh, <laughs> too much to to overcome. So Kitty Pride, and then one of those cards like Silver Surfer that I never thought I'd use very much, Bast, mm-hmm. because most variations of this deck I had four was my highest power. Often I'd get Luke Cage, and if Bast lowers one of your cards to three, Luke Cage will put them back to where they started. It's brilliant. So, um, and then, of course, Luke Cage and Hazmat. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I don't have Hazmat in every deck with Luke Cage, but usually it's because I've removed her for somebody else, because those those two, I mean, you know, it's Power Man and Hazmat, the classic comic team. Yeah, and, <laughs> I mean, he, he's not really useful with Iron Fist. I, I, I experimented with a few of the three cost cards, but I put a bunch of three cost cards in because of Silver Surfer. But I ended up going with Mystique, Gambit, Wolfsbane, Brood, and Silver Surfer. Yes. And then Wong to fire up all of those. Well, I mean, Wong doesn't really do much good with, with Brood. And actually, I'm just going to call it Brew because I don't, I mean, I like the Brood as villains. I don't like the Brood on my side, but I like Brew. I like um, it. You get Wong. You get lucky enough to get Mystique out there, and you can blow up four cards or eight if you play them on Camertage. You can get, get Wolfsbane from a one power to some ridiculous number. You can have Silver Surfer boosting all those three cost cards. I forget who I started with, but for a long time I had Rescue in there, so occasionally I would play Rescue on Wong, so she would get boosted up to 14 instead of just nine. Yeah. But eventually, I went back to another guy that's in just about all my decks, Thor. Another three cost. Depending on how things fall, you can get Mjolnir in there. Always like to have Thor when Bar Sinister is in play. Mm-hmm. I I, have, I finally hit a wall with this deck. I got into the 90s. I went back down to about 88. And then I, I went back to one of my old decks. And then tried, a, tried another deck that maybe I won't spell it out for you because I might play that one against you. But I'll tell you that I named it Boomerang Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Boomer snap. It's centered around Kitty Pride and the Beast. Yep, I could tell um, and, already. And the Collector. And then, so I, I got going with those, and I went back to this deck. And uh, yeah, it was it was Thor in Bar Sinister with Mjolnir. <laughs> that's the one that put me over the top to Infinite. Nice. Yeah, I was going to say, you you made some moves with Bar Sinister out there then. You had yeah, to. I mean, I, I hit two in a row where I got eight eight cubes. I mean, I, I'd love to say it was all skill. Things things broke my way for sure, but what, yeah. Did you, was, did you notice like a lot of the same decks as you got closer to Infinite that you were going up against? Not really, but I'm not that okay. observant. You still see a lot of Infinity Stones and, and High Evolutionary. That, yeah. that was most of what I saw. There were a lot of move decks out there. The one that I beat to get to infinite, I mean, it was mostly he got all six infinity stones out there and he had Cosmo. And then I I thought I had it. And then he played uh, he played Kazar on Bar Sinister <laughs> and Ooh. pumped those infinity stones up a lot. I forget which which one it was that, that I I made it work, but I just I just barely squeaked that one out. Nice. 
I sent you a message and I was like, this thing's not working for me. I mean, I'm still where I'm sp- where I've been at. But then like shortly after that, I started seeing some success with the deck that you built with Silver Surfer and Wong. Uh, I was winning about, I don't know, I would say, oh, man, three out of every five matches is pretty much. I mean, it was really becoming pretty, pretty good. And I was going up a little bit. Um, just didn't like I said, I didn't play a whole lot this go around. But when I did, I was using that deck and I started I'd switch back to another one and I'd be like, man, I'm not doing as well as I was with this one that Evan did for a lot of what I did this season was using that same deck just to see what I could do. And man, that silver surfer uh, brew combo uh, with Wong, you know, sitting there doubling things up, dude, it was very, very helpful. So, you know, I I don't think I would have hit it um, without mixing all, all those up but yeah for for a while there it was just it, it was just too good and I, I i think one of the things that works with it is it gives you a lot of flexibility because there's you know not a lot of cards you have to play at a certain time i mean you want to get you want to get bast out there fairly early to boost some of those low low point ones right and if you don't have gambit and don't get mule near then it's it's hard to take on some of those some of the bigger, bigger. cost cards but it right. is it is easy to to build up those low point ones to something formidable. Yeah. Myself, I didn't run into as much high evolutionary as I did the previous season, which I'm very thankful for. It sounds like it was the opposite of what was going on with you, but I did the algorithm. Listen to our, the last episodes. I I wouldn't (laughs) doubt it one bit. Uh, I did see a lot of destruction decks. Mm -hmm. Like it seemed like I was going up against something with either Nimrod in it or null or one of the first few games that I was using with your deck. I was drove just almost to the brink of throwing my phone when, you know, I'm I'm like, all right, here we go. I'm about to knock out all of these cards and he's only got a one venom sitting out there and a Wolverine. And what do I do? I target Wolverine like five times or something yeah. like that. So it, and it's just like, oh, my gosh, what was I doing? Made me so mad. Wouldn't be wasn't able to get very far sometimes when I was facing those destruction decks. But we were talking about the great web. And I had a game where I was getting slaughtered. How it ended up was I played Heimdall on the ice box. So I guess I sent Spider-Man 2099 over to the negative zone and Iron Fist and Segron over to the Great Web. And they had an often destroyed Wolverine at the ice box. So it was 10 to 8. And uh, the Great Web yoinked Wolverine over. So they had all their cards on the Great Web. So I won <laughs> with eight points on the ice box and three <laughs> points on the negative zone. <laughs> That's great. That is great. That that was not a skilled victory, but I took the four cubes. The next thing I'll just kind of mention here, I'm not going to have a whole lot to say about it, but they unleashed a new game mode this season called Conquest. And I'm going to read straight from marvelsnapzone.com an an explanation of what Conquest is. Conquest is new competitive game... Who wrote this? Is a new competitive game mode for Marvel Snap, utilizing its battle mode feature, where players enter a series of runs, each with increasing difficulty. So similar to battle mode, where you each get... Is it a total of 10? 10 health. Your objective is to win against other players and advance through the tiers, which are proving grounds, silver, gold, and infinity. With each victory, you'll earn medals and secure your spot in the next conquest. Each match in conquest is determined over multiple individual games of Marvel Snap, just like the unranked battle mode. And their bullet points here are each player starts with 10 health, and each player loses health equal to the values of the cube. So again, just like friendly battle. Players lock in a deck and use the same deck throughout the games within the same battle, just like friendly battle. And there are no ties, winners or losers only. So I've done, I did this once. I say I didn't have very much experience with it. That's because I did it once. (laughs) It was a very long and grueling battle where we both got down to one, like we were trading back and forth and we both got down to one health point left and i ended up winning so i beat the proving grounds but i didn't go any further than that i think i played at least one at every level i don't think i ever won more than than two in a row at first i was i mean i I didn't have a problem with them adding it but i wasn't too excited about it one because a carnageized green goblin isn't much of a an incentive for me like hey twisted villains let's make him worse my main objection to it was that I mean, the whole appeal of Snap to me is you, you, you can play a game really quick. Yeah. And and I mean, battle mode, that takes a little longer. But, I, you know, I'm, I'm playing with you. I'm playing with my brother. I'm playing with other friends. So that that's cool. 
this felt like like more of a time commitment that than was what I wanted out of Snap. Now I've wasted plenty of time playing Snap, um, so <laughs> better planning would you know allow me to to try a conquest if, if if I wanted to. What I what I found out by accident yesterday is you don't have to play all, all of them at once. Oh. Um, I, I, I won a match in Conquest, and then I hit something, and I played, and I won, and I'm like, that's it? Did the guy just quit? No, I'd actually just gone back to the regular uh, ranked mode, and then I went back in and, and continued the, the Conquest. So you can't start a new Conquest, but you can play one round with somebody and then stop and go back to it. Okay, when you say one round, are you talking about a full, like... One battle. One battle. One battle. Yeah, okay, one gotcha. battle. First one to lose ten health. Gotcha. Okay. So you, All right. You can do that, but then you don't have to do the next level right then. Gotcha. Okay. So that that made it more more appealing to me. And then once I you know stumbled backwards into hitting infinite, I was like, well, okay, that gives me something else to to play for. You know, I'll probably never reach it again. But um, <laughs> you know that. So that 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 was that was good to have. Um, to you know to try that out. I, d- I did confirm that with a friend of mine who's played a lot more Conquest than me. I tried to do it on my lunch break today, but I, I couldn't beat the first uh, person on Infinity. So, ouch. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a back and forth one, but uh, it's neat. I mean, it's it's good to to vary the the game modes. I just I wasn't too excited about it at first because I thought it it would you know kind of defeat the purpose of Snap, which was hey you can get it a quick game every once in a while. And it's cool that unlike the friendly uh, battles, you can still uh, make progress toward your missions on it. Oh, okay. It doesn't affect your rank, but like you know, if you play a six cost card and that's one of your missions, you get you get credit for those. The whole time commitment thing—that's a real thing. I mean, when you think about it, I mean, if you win the game, great, or if you win the battle, great. But if you lose, that's the other thing about Snap. Yes. You know, we can play these things quickly. And mm-hmm. if we win quickly versus lose quickly, it seems to sting less if I lost a game that only took two, three minutes to play. Yeah. But if I'm spending 15 minutes trying to battle a guy down, you wouldn't believe how angry I was getting and how angry I would have been if I would have lost that first round where me and this guy battled back and forth and went down to one point. Yeah. Uh, it took a long time to get there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I've got to leave. Yeah, but, if, I, if I'm going to do that, if I'm going to put that much time into it, I'd rather be playing against you or, you know, have it right. be, be somebody I know. I was just going to say, but it, but it seems like at least right now, Conquest is like something else you can do. It doesn't seem like a must. I mean, unless the reward is something you really, really want. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, 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 I mainly did it just to see how Conquest worked. And, you know, I figure, well, I've come this far. I may as well get the get the prize. You know, it, it, it seems like a... a a variation, not something you have to do. Yeah. It's, and there is some stuff that's tempting there when I was looking at it. I was like, oh, okay, well, some of this stuff makes it seem like it would be worth putting some effort into, but... I mean, again, there's a mystery variant in there. You know, I, you know, I love variants. Yeah, we can't complain about that. Unless it's one of those weird sports ones. <laughs> I like comics. I like sports. I, I don't know. Very few of those sports variants uh, really do it for me. If you don't have an NFL Super Pro card in this game, then what are we doing, folks? What are we doing? Or at least Kickers, Inc. At least, ki- okay, all right, we could do that, too. You, it, man, if this game lasts, uh, you know, a couple more years, there's going to have to be a new universe season. Please do. One of these days, we'll be like, and the next featured card is Razorback. <laughs> Yeah, you're going to run out of some A-plus players here pretty soon. <laughs> All right. How many tokens are you saving up for Chipmunk Hunk? <laughs> okay, let's talk about our unlocks for the season. I will go first. Shortly after we uh, recorded last time, I actually unlocked Null. So I was, I was able to finally get Null and use him. Welcome I got to a, the dark side, Jesse. Y- yeah, buddy. I got a Dan Hip Lady Sif. Nice. Kid variant Maximus. I think we both were talking about this. Uh, we both got Shanna the She Devil. Yeah, I got her this season. Okay, she was right. like the the card that dropped into series three. That was the only one I didn't have. I made a deck with her and Kazar and a lot of one power cards. Um, I think I think I used Dazzler. With the the goal of you know like filling yeah filling up a bunch of stuff. Mojo and Mojo Wolf's Bane. Spider-Ham, of course. 
And uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it worked okay. It, it had a lot of cards that felt like it should work, but I didn't get very far with it. But uh, I mainly mention it because as an ode to a, a Squirrel Girl storyline, and since I had Kazar and Shauna, I called my deck Savage Brands. That's the clothing line at the gift shop in the Savage Land. That is beautiful. Uh, then I got a Luchador variant Warpath. My crusade to get L- Luchador variants continues. Nice. There's only I, like three of them, aren't there? There's a Luchador Taskmaster, Luchador Warpath. There's a Titania one. There's a Titania Wrestling variant. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen. Uh, My only issue with the Luchador variants is that with the exception of maybe Taskmaster, they they all feel like they should be Luchador variants. Like, I want somebody who has no business with a Luchador variant, like Invisible Woman or Professor X. Yes, I want a Professor X Luchador variant. Oh, my goodness. That's that's what I want to see. Drax. Drax has a Luchador yeah. variant. Yeah. I mean, Drax uh, had a comic written by CM Punk. You know, he's a big dude. You you yeah. expect him to be be wrestling affiliated. I Give me give me some left field stuff. A Mysterio okay. Luchador variant. Right. With the fishbowl head. How would that work? Like, would the mask be stretched over the fishbowl? <laughs> <laughs> so the ones that I've seen, Drax, Taskmaster, Titania, Warpath. Apparently, now again, I never really know what to trust from Snap Zone because they have a Blob Luchador variant, which Blob doesn't exist in this game. I'm surprised he doesn't. Blob feels like he would be like I know Colossus can't be moved, but yeah, it feels like Blob would be one that you you can't move him. Well, that's it. That's exactly what it says. Ongoing. Nothing can move this to another location. There is apparently a M'Baku Luchador, and I want to see if this is released. It is. It's released. Oh, now that'd be that'd be nice. He is on the second rope. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. I feel bad. I haven't used M'Baku for a while. He just he keeps getting edged out of uh, the one cost slots because uh, you know Spider Ham. And Sunspot yeah, right. and and Shadow, I mean Kitty Pride. It's hard. It's hard to bump any of them out. Yeah, uh, they have three others here that aren't released: a Sabretooth, Sentry, and Strong Guy. And oh, then there's that'd, a, that'd be good. The Sentry one looks awesome. Like he has like the big S is on the championship belt around his waist. <laughs> Which nice. is great. Uh, and then we have White Tiger. I'm looking to see if this is released. No, it's unreleased. Four. I only the ones I want a Doctor Doom Luchador too. Oh please. Let's get a Luchador Watcher. Luchador Watcher, yes. Oh, we want Luchador. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah. But, too much. We we talked about it already. I bought Spider Ham for three thousand tokens. Pretty sure I unlocked Negasonic Teenage Warhead. Yeah, I, I remember you sending me that message. Yep. Uh, Venomized variant for Nova. Mm-hmm. A Pixel variant Rogue. Nice. Uh, and then bought Spider Man 2099. And then just yesterday, I unlocked a Chibi Angel. And this is the this is the oh, uh, Archangel. Yeah, Archangel. This is the Archangel. Yeah. Um, that yeah, uh, and that it, I that's, I love that one. I uh, immediately replaced it in all my decks, which I don't think I had any decks with a minute. But <laughs> regardless, <laughs> regardless, th- that's the one that's going to be going to any de- into any decks. I love that Archangel look. So there you go. That's really all my unlocks for this past right. season. How about how about you? Well, I got um, speaking of themed uh, variant themes, I got the Bucky sidecar variant. I remember you talking which, about this, which one. just seems like a Bucky variant and not a very significant. Like there, there's some that are just like, "Hey, here's another version of the character," and it's just labeled variant. And so I, I wondered why did you label it sidecar variant? I mean, yeah, he's in a sidecar, and this got me thinking: if you're going to do that, make the sidecar variant interesting. Let's have more, more sidecar variant characters. Like, uh, think, think I, I mentioned this to you. Let's have Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. Variant. But nobody's driving the motorcycle, and he's just sitting there like, because he's the guy that drives the motorcycle, so why is he in the the sidecar? (laughs) Right. Or a Giganto sidecar variant, where it's just Giganto standing over a normal-sized motorcycle with a sidecar on the right. He can't get in because Giganto can only be played on the left. That's so great. So that that that's that's what I want to see. You know, the Bucky sidecar variant. I was like, eh, but uh, make it make it part of a series. You know, have me chase it down so I can make an entire sidecar variant deck. That's what, or how about this? A Mysterio sidecar variant where Mysterio there's two sidecars and Mysterio is in both sidecars and on the motorcycle. But which one's the real one? Ah, uh, yeah. Spent far too much time thinking about this. Uh, anyway, speaking of Mysterio, I got a Mysterio Pixel variant. Okay. All right. Always, always like the Pixel variants. Um, 
my first purchase in Conquest, I got an Apocalypse Dan Hip variant. Ooh, yeah. I, I think I ended up with that one a while back. Um, it's a it's a pretty cool looking card. I want to be uh, able to field an entire Dan Hip deck, but it's like I I, I had enough cards to do uh, an all pixel variant deck, but it took me a while to get enough cards that would actually work well together to make it playable. <laughs> You know, it's like a, a friend of mine, I'm going to steal his joke, he used to talk about right after Unbreakable came out, he wanted to see a sequel while Jackson leaning fully into the Mr. Glass identity. Mm -hmm. And it was like, and he's got these henchmen, you know, like Batman style. And he's like, uh, it's like, look at this. It's a helicopter made of glass. And they're like, but but does it fly? And he goes, who cares? Well, then what's the point? It's a helicopter made of glass. So that's it. It's like, look, I made a Dan Hip deck. And it's completely <laughs> unusable, but I did it. Hey, you did it. You've accomplished something. I have to tell him I stole his joke and maybe send him five bucks. I don't know. So then I got a uh, I got Shauna the She Devil like we talked about. I got the Black Panther Max Grecky variant. Oh, well, okay. it does look cool, but I don't end up using a lot of the Grecky variants. Well, I I did finally use the Carnage one, but then I got Pixel Carnage, and that's the only Carnage I use now. I got a Collector Pixel variant, which I put. I I really want like the classic comic Collector, but um the Pixel one is is less creepy than the full on Benicio del Toro one. The, that he comes standard with. So I've been using that one in my boomerang snap deck. Boomerang snap. And then then I got then I got Spider Ham, bought Spider Ham, got the Nokia sports variant, which is another one of those. It's like, you know what I need my comic book characters to do? Play sports I don't understand. What what is she which one is she doing? She's there? like throwing a discus, I think. I mean and I mean I am sorry, it's not like I'm the only you know, maybe there's people who like comics and track and field and they're like, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I've got Nokia throwing a discus. I've got a Koye throwing the javelin. You know, let's say I got multiple man running the relay race. That that one is kind of clever. You, um, you know, Nick so, Fury, uh, Nick Fury calling a foul. Yeah, I mean, you know, so so it doesn't work for me. But you know, I, maybe there's no demand for my sidecar variant series. So it's just different strokes for different folks. You know, <laughs> I got I got Stegron in the collector's cache, and then I got that uh. The Peter Porker variant of Spider Ham. That's so great. For the season pass mystery variant, I got the freebie. I got uh, Baby Magneto, where he's made a helmet out of silverware as he eats his cereal. That's oh nice. I got then I got Spider Man twenty ninety nine. I got a baby variant of Thor, where he's chasing Loki, who's been turned into a goat. And uh, then I got the uh, Carnageized Green Goblin. Carnageized doesn't just say Red Goblin. Yeah, then again, that's... I think they've made another character called Red Goblin that's like Norman's grandson. So maybe they're saving him for his own card. Wow. Oh, so did you get the Carnageized Goblin through yeah. uh, the Conquest? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, got, I got, got just enough to to get that. Although the Norman Osborn variant that I actually want is a Gold Goblin. I don't know if you've read any of those, but they uh, they actually, in story, plausibly made Norman a good guy. Oh, okay. Like 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 for, for real this time, and uh, they did a limited series called Gold Goblin that was actually pretty cool. Wow. Oh. So that's, uh, those are my unlocks. Okay. Thanks a lot for joining us. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for the next installment of Snap Material.